Breast cancer, I think, is turning out to be different than heart disease or diabetes for, and some other conditions. For those conditions, we have identified aspects of diet and lifestyle, and if you follow them, you will almost, you have a very, very low chance of getting heart attack or diabetes. That includes the type of fat, the type of fiber, getting enough folic acids, fruits and vegetables, physical activity, not smoking, and a few things like that. If you follow that package, you'll, you will almost for sure not get uh, uh, diabetes or coronary heart disease. For breast cancer, though, it is turning out to be different, and that's because the strong, in fact, very well established risk factors for breast cancer are actually our reproductive behavior. And with preventing heart disease, for example, we can go back to what would be a traditional lifestyle where heart disease hardly existed, and we can do that, and, and we won't get heart we won't get heart disease. But for the traditional lifestyle is something that for, uh, we really don't want to go back to because that would mean uh, getting pre first of all being undernourished as a child, having uh, children as soon as menstruation started, having 15 or 20 pregnancies, and long lactation in between them. And for all kinds of personal reasons and ecological reasons, that that's something uh, we, we would not want to go back to. But we do know that that would reduce breast cancer to very, very low levels. So uh, that would be the, the payoff. So, the, so let me summarize. That means you're always pregnant or breastfeeding. <laughs> that's what Walter just said. Yeah. So, right. So it, what we're dealing with is a background situation where we're, we're uh, women want to have education and we can't have huge numbers of children per family for sustainability reasons and so small families uh, usually later because of education employment is going to be sort of a, a given and so the, our question is given that circumstance how are we going to reduce breast cancer when we know that background has put uh, women at a high risk and we have found as I mentioned a few things that uh, uh, Avoiding weight gain during midlife will help reduce postmenopausal breast cancer, but it won't do anything about premenopausal breast cancer. Uh, dealing with alcohol, but that's a small part of it. Um, avoiding uh, some forms of hormone replacement after menopause has turned out to be a very important issue. And the combination of estrogen plus progestin, uh, Prempro, turns out to be really terrible for increasing breast cancer risk. I, I think it's just something that shouldn't be used. And Mark has thought of, we've discussed this issue too. For some people, estrogen alone uh, has a role. Uh, but having looked at this issue now for 30 years, I'm quite convinced that we're not going to find sort of natural, what might be called natural diet and lifestyle factors that will eliminate 90% of breast cancer because, again, the background situation is not the natural situation. And Probably, uh, we, again, there are some of these things that are important that we can uh, do to reduce risk, but we're, to really bring the risk down further, we're probably going to have to use some hormonal preparations that somehow mimic the kind of reproductive factors that would have been the, the, the norm. And for example, it may well be to, uh, possible to find the right combination of hormones for oral contraceptive pills that not just prevent pregnancy, but also drop breast cancer risk. We're finding that some of them elevate, and if we take out some of the progestin parts and oral contraceptives, I think we actually may find a way to uh, accomplish contraception and reduce breast cancer risk as well. And I also think that uh, anti-estrogens uh, are going to play a, a part in breast cancer prevention for some women as well. Again, this is going to have to be individualized, but it's very clear now that roloxifen or Avista does have a substantial impact on reducing breast cancer incidence. And for some women, that actually uh, is, uh, will be a good choice. I think we don't yet know exactly for who. Uh, it will definitely also reduce osteoporosis and fracture risk, and it looks like uh, uh, breast cancer prevention is, is part of that. So uh, in a, that's the broad picture. Sure. Uh, some combination of lifestyle factors that would include staying lean and active, for sure, that's going to be uh, right at the top of the list for breast cancer prevention. Uh, if you drink alcohol in moderation, take some folic acid. Uh, there's quite a bit of evidence, not yet really conclusive, that 
inadequate vitamin D is a problem for not here in, in uh, Palm Beach, but uh, for those of us who stay in, in the northeast and northern part of the U.S. for most of the year, uh, inadequate vitamin D is very widespread. For some people, that may be helpful as well. Uh, so there's some other uh, aspects that we're still looking at, looking at and also uh, diet and lifestyle during the early, uh, during adolescence. There's, uh, and that's one of the things we're examining right now. It's a, it's a challenging and, and new area, but it does look like rapid growth by, during the adolescent years, uh, rapid gain in height is clearly related to higher breast cancer risk decades later. And so the question is, what is it that drives that rapid gain in weight? And we're with support from the Breast Cancer Research Foundation looking at that right now. The first factor that's emerging is that high dairy consumption does seem to be accelerating uh, rapid gain in weight. So what's the right amount? I think it's fine to have some dairy, but what's the right amount is one of the questions that we'll be looking at. Uh, so, so, Walter, there's one thing that, that I think probably is worth maybe illuminating here, and that is when people are worried about risk, um, we tend to think about it globally, but the problem in part is breast cancer risk at a young age, a relatively young age. Uh, one thing that you have to say out loud to make it clear is that the number one risk factor for breast cancer is getting older. That is the dominant risk, uh, period. And that's true for men in prostate cancer, and it's true for breast cancer. So until Walter can turn the clock back, we're, we're going to have to think about his answer superimposed on that ticking clock, right? Right, yes. And breast cancer, again, is complicated because this, some of the factors are different before menopause and after right. menopause. So that's a big transition.